Sup, familia? I'm Leon, the Paperback Maniac, coming at you with another vintage horror book review. Tonight, we are taking a look at Night Bait by Philip Straker. Philip Straker was an early pen name for an author who these days goes by the moniker Edward Lee. Yes, this is the first Ed Lee book I'm reviewing on this channel. I uh, decided to start with a deep cut because that's how I roll. Uh, this book was published by Zebra in 1982. I will begin by reading the synopsis from the back cover. A romantic drive at dusk. He was handsome, charming, irresistible. And just as dusk shrouded the city, he'd straighten his tie, button his jacket, and pick up a woman to kill. A cozy evening for two. He'd wine her and dine her, entrance her, enchant her. Then he'd take her to his secluded estate for the most electrifying lovemaking of her life. A night to remember. He'd draw a bath for two, and just as she settled into soothing water, he'd sensually smile. Their night together had only just begun. Okay, so as usual, uh, the synopsis is not the most accurate, uh, but what else is new? So, uh, it's 1982, and a necrophile psycho killer is stalking the streets of Washington, D.C. So the novel opens with a hooker named Diane uh, standing on a downtown street corner, shivering in the cold. It's Friday night, and uh, the sidewalks are bustling with prostitutes who are, quote, shaking their tits and jogging their asses in front of any male human being who dared to set foot on the street, end quote. Now, we get some great descriptions of early 80s city squalor here. You know, uh, we get, like, adult bookstores, uh, peep show racks, massage parlors, all lit up in blood-red neon. Now, Diane is turning down every John who approaches her. And that's because Diane isn't just any hooker. She's actually an undercover vice cop who is uh, posing as a uh, bait to try to uh, trap uh, a, a killer who's out on the streets. A killer who has been uh, dubbed the electrocutionist by the media. You gotta love that early 80s uh, sensationalism there with a, with a name called the Electrocutionist. So uh, she has been selected as a decoy uh, from the police department because she fits the uh, physical build of um, you know the, the killer's type. Namely, she's petite. But that doesn't mean that she's uh, you know weak. She's actually a one tough cookie. She, you know she's packing a 22 Smith and Wesson, and she is just waiting for an opportunity to plant a slug between the sicko's eyeballs. Um, now she she's out there, and uh, she doesn't. The other prostitutes on the street, streetwise uh, hookers, they all know that she's a vice cop, and they taunt her by calling, uh, saying to her, "Piggy, piggy, piggy," and uh, and she responds by uh, choking them, telling them to get lost, uh, even threatening one uh, prostitute, saying, "Quote." I'll throw you in the lezzy tank so all your bull dyke sisters can take turns sitting on your face. Ah, the early 80s, uh, when political correctness didn't exist, right? Well, unfortunately, she does come across the electrocutionist, and it does not end well for her. Uh, she's basically uh, found uh, in the morning, wrapped up in a plastic sheet. Uh, she has been uh, defiled uh, after death. Her uh, gun is found in a place that has no right being, uh, and her with her um, ID pin uh, uh, pinned to her nipple. Uh, she's got like these gaping holes in her shoulders where the rats had been gnawing on her. Uh, doesn't look good. Um, so then we meet the uh, police uh, homicide captain, a guy named Greg Dignazio. Now this guy's had a lot of success in the past being on the homicide uh, squad, 
Although lately, with this uh, this new killer on the streets, um, things are not going too well for him. Um, especially, you know, with the latest victims, uh, this you know, and and the decoy uh, getting murdered, uh, he's feeling the heat. He's feeling a lot of pressure uh, to break this case. Uh, he's been, you know, reprimanded recently for not having tails on his decoys. He was actually ordered to pull his decoys from the streets, lest any more cops get killed. And, you know, he's just really uh, struggling. Uh, this, this, this new guy, this killer, uh, the electrocutionist, is not your garden variety psychopath either. This guy has got a sick MO. Uh, he basically uh, picks up these women. He uh, jabs, like, some sodium pentothal into their necks, necks with an automatic injector once they get in his car. He takes them back to his place. Um, he puts them in a bathtub, he gags them with a, with a tennis ball so they can't scream when they wake up, and then as soon as they wake up, he uh, fries them uh, in the bathtub with like an electrical appliance. And then after they have died, he rapes them. So, he, so he's actually a necrophiliac as well. And uh, yeah, this, you know, this does not look good. W women keep, keep getting abducted and killed, and he's pretty desperate, this Dignazio. Well, he remembers a spunky uh, prostitute who had actually helped break a huge case a year ago, a girl named Vicki Anderson, who had uh, basically helped out the police by testifying against uh, her vicious pimp who had been uh, lacing heroin and killing a bunch of uh, junkies and, and people in the city. He remembers how brave that woman had been. And apparently this Vicky has gone clean since then. She's actually given up whoring and uh, she's got like a straight, uh, you know, a straight lace job now. But he wonders if maybe she could help him because, because, you know, she had a lot of spunk and courage and, you know, who knows the streets better than an old prostitute, right? So he's thinking, you know, maybe I can get her to be one of my uh, unofficial uh, decoys. And this has got to be completely, you know, like, low key. Uh, no one can know about this. He's going to pay her under the table and she will be a bait for this killer. She'll be the night bait. So um, he contacts Vicky and he kind of proposes to her. He says, look, you know, we could really use your help. All you got to do is, you know, throw on your old whore outfits, go stand on the street corner. You can do that, right? Like you used to be a prostitute. And, um, you know, we've got, we're going to have a, an undercover cop watching you the entire time and uh, nothing's going to happen to you. You know, if, if we see that it's the man, if it's our man, because they do have like a, a composite sketch of of this guy, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll get him. They'll, they'll bust him before anything happens to her. So what could go wrong, right? So, um, you know, Vicky is, you know, she wonders at first, well, like, why me? Why me? And he explains to her, well, you know, like, you showed all that courage and you know the streets well. And he also tells her that, that she is um, this killer's type, uh, namely that she's an endomorph, that, that she's petite, she's got those slim hips and small boobs. And, uh, and, and Edward Lee actually uses the word endomorph, which proves that uh, even back in 1982, with his first novel, uh, he was he loved to show off with his diction and his his crazy word choices, which I just love. Um, so you know, Vicky kind of ponders this. She's on the fence. She knows it's an incredibly dangerous uh, job, and she just got out of you know whoring. Like now, now she's got to go back on the streets, and she's kind of you know. Uh, vacillating back and forth, but the clincher is when her roommate and bestie, of course, uh, becomes the electrocutionist's latest victim. Then she decides, okay, you know what, I'm going to do this. She's been looking for some purpose in her life. Uh, you know, she's also been kind of struggling to pay the bills lately, so, um, you know, these guys are going to pay her well for this. So she decides uh, she's going to do it, so she goes back on the streets. They explain to her, you know, the killer's MO, how he, he picks up, he likes prostitutes, he likes women of her physical type. Um, he's going to approach her. Um, you know, he's going to try to get her in the car, but they will, you know, there's going to be an undercover cop, a, a guy named Chet, who will be watching the entire time. And, you know, if he actually, he's going to be watching from an unmarked car. And if he sees that uh, this is actually, in fact, the, the guy that they're, they're looking for, he's going to flick his cigarette lighter it, through the windshield, uh, and signifying to her that this is the man and that she should go off with him. Uh, but then he's going to go out and, you know, bust the guy before, you know, she can like get too 
close to him or whatever, like before she gets in the car and gets jabbed by, with that sodium pentothal. So, so now Vicky is, you know, back, uh, in her own, uh, life, uh, you know, back on the streets at night, uh, trying to bait this, uh, necrophiliac, uh, murderous psychopath. So, um, so, so that, that is your, your basic premise right there. Uh, so, yeah, so like my thoughts on this novel. Well, um, the necrophile sex killer was quite uh, fascinating, I thought, and creepy. I mean, th this guy's obsession with sex and death and, and particularly the combination of the two was, you know, was, was pleasantly uh, disgusting. And, you know, the fact that this guy completely rationalizes what he does and actually thinks that he's in fact sane, he thinks that he's the sanest person there is is just uh is, is amusing and and entertaining um what else uh so we get obviously you know some great descriptions of the uh, urban porno districts of yesteryear you know these these scenes of with these uh you know hookers just wandering uh the, the streets at night you know looking for looking for johns uh, john by the way is a term for a, a prostitute's client if you didn't know um the, the book is interesting also in that it shows that many of Edward Lee's predilections as a writer uh, were there from the very beginning, uh, albeit, you know, in a cruder form. But like, you know, the sex and the violence is, is present here, uh, though not nearly as graphic, of course, as his later work. Uh, but there are some pretty brutal and intense scenes. There's a pretty uh, graphic uh, gang rape scene. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of rape scenes in this. There's also a pretty uh, graphic scene of necrophilia. So, uh, so you know, that's fun. Um, you know, the novel actually reminds me in a way of an old school anime movie from 1990. It was actually an anime show called Mad Bull, what was it called? Mad Bull 34. Now, uh, this is an anime that's basically Japan's uh, take on uh, New York City crime and police, uh, like, like in the late 80s. And but like everything is cranked up to the nth degree. It, it's so exaggerated. Every character is is just despicable. Uh, you know, it's just incredibly just violent and nihilistic. Um, there's no one to root for. Like no good characters. The police are heinous. I mean, and and we've just got these ridiculously over the top scenes. You know, there there are um, you know scenes of like. Uh, these people like holding up a shop wearing uh, like Jason style hockey masks on roller skates using shotguns that uh, like ex make people's heads explode like something out of a scanners movie. Um, and it's, it's very clearly like a foreign take on what urban life in the U.S. is like. And this novel kind of reminds me of that. It's, it's almost like Edward Lee is writing a book that is um, has really no basis in reality. It's it, it's pure fantasy. It's so like just like over the top and just like ridiculous that that you can't you can't treat it seriously. And and you know for that reason I can enjoy it on an entertainment level. It's kind of like how I defend a, no, a book or a movie like uh, Fulci's The New York Ripper, which on the surface is just like a incredibly tasteless, just ridiculous, violent, misogynistic thing. But I mean, it's so over the top that there's absolutely no semblance of reality. It's, it's really pure fantasy. And that, that's kind of what this novel feels like. It's almost like it was dreamed up by a 13 year old who's read too many comic books and seen too many violent movies. And, you know, and, and, and in that way, it's, it's just entertaining. Um, there are, of course, you know, being from this time period, there are some elements of this book that could be seen as racist. Uh, like, it, for instance, the depiction of a monstrous black pimp. Uh, and there's also, um, what else? Like, there's there's uh, suggestions that uh, Middle Eastern prisons are filled with necrophiliac barbarians and that there's just, like, a bunch of, like, government-sanctioned mutilation, torture, and death going on there. There's also a healthy dose of homophobia and all these things. But I, I do not believe that Edward Lee, uh, you know, is is racist or homophobic. I, I'm willing to chalk it up to just, you know, the pulp subject matter and also the early 80s time period in which the book was written. Um, but yeah, the, the world of this book is just squalid, 
ugly, violent, damn near nihilistic. Uh, I mean, this is a world populated by junkies, pimps, uh, psychos, and whores. Um, but it's also a world presided over by God, because uh, let's not forget, uh, Edward Lee is a religious man. Um, and uh, But this is a God uh, who kind of just like looks over his creation and the filth that they live in and just like uh, just the just utter cesspool of vice and weakness of human beings in the world. Um, the novel also kind of takes a very uh, sort of right wing uh, moralistic stance uh, when it comes to. Um, you know, the idea of uh, like like prostitution and hookers. Uh, I mean, it, it's no surprise that Edward Lee was very close friends with Richard Lehman, who also kind of, I sense, takes this stance in his books. Uh, it's, there's a very judgmental sort of angle here that, you know, uh, prostitutes are morally uh, bankrupt and that they're completely to blame. And it actually almost kind of suggests that they are expendable and, um, you know, they're worth sacrificing uh, for a cause like this because they're just inferior and they are, are completely to blame for their circumstances. And, uh, you know, that, you know, things like stripping and prostitution is just like the most, uh, like lowest, most uh, degrading, de debasing type thing that you can do. So it's kind of a very conservative viewpoint. Um, but um, yeah, you know, that's that's I guess just that's that's his opinion or, or so it would seem. Uh, but the novel is very uh, very well written. I would say. Um, I mean, it's it, it's clean and it's it's got some great imagery. In fact, in in some ways, I actually kind of prefer his writing in this than some of his later stuff. I mean, some of the things that he does like in his later works are are missing here, and some of the things that annoys me like um, like. Later in his career, Edward Lee would kind of like over research his novels and he would just like cram them with all of this arcane vocabulary that's completely unnecessary uh, just to kind of like show, oh, look how smart I am and how much research I did. That's kind of missing here, which is refreshing, uh, but it's still, you know, it, it is very uh, well, well written. Um, there are even uh, some nascent traces of Ed Lee humor in this book. Uh, such as when the main character, Vicky, uh, quips, Sometimes I wish I were a schizophrenic. At least that way I'd have someone to talk to at night. But, um, but the humor is nowhere near as, as hilarious as like his later works, because he really is a, like a genuinely funny uh, writer. Um, but yeah, this is just a really fun novel. If, if you haven't gotten yet, I, I really enjoyed this. I mean, because the beats of it, though, are so familiar, like the plot is not going to be anything new. Uh, I mean, it, it is kind of predictable in the way it plays out. Uh, like, for instance, I mean, anyone who has seen any movie ever is going gonna, is gonna to know that Vicky will end up hooking up with the undercover cop who is, um, you know, assigned to sort of tail her when she's having these... Um, you know, like when she's baiting the killer. I mean, that's just obvious. But uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't detract at all from the enjoyment of the book. I mean, it's it's sort of like comforting to know like the beats that are going to happen and the way that they're presented is fun. And uh, and the climax of the novel when Vicky uh, inevitably uh, comes face to face with the electrocutionist, you know that's going to happen, uh, is actually a very uh, tense and riveting scene. Although there is a part of the of the ending that just really pissed me off and was was super annoying, the, and the denouement is also a little dumb. But the the final kind of confrontation between Vicky and the electrocutionist was was really really well done. And there is a description of a bullet blasting through an eyeball that is like one of the best things I've read all year. So so um, really really cool. But uh, yeah, I mean. If you like disreputable early 80s exploitation sleaze, um, you know, like if you like uh, seedy and mean spirited movies like um, The New York Ripper, which I mentioned, or Maniac or uh, Vice Squad, all incidentally uh, released in the year 1982. Uh, actually, the same year that this was published, then uh, then this is the book for you. If you like that kind of thing, if you don't mind getting a little grimy, 
and you're not like going to be like super like offended by uh, like politically incorrect things uh, from this period, then uh, then I would recommend this book. I know that Edward Lee is uh, is not <laughs> is not proud of this work. In fact, he refuses to talk about it. If you ever speak with him, do not mention this book. Uh, and he vows to never like have it reprinted. Uh, it's kind of a shame because I find it to be like quite uh, quite an entertaining novel. I I enjoyed it and I would recommend it for uh, people who like exploitation. So yeah, that is Night Beat by uh, Edward Lee, writing as Philip Straker. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Um, yeah, so, you know, check back soon. Uh, next week, I think probably next weekend, I'm gonna do uh, another mailbox video. This one's gonna be fucking mega. It's just like ridiculous. It's gonna be a massive one. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for that. But uh, yeah, until then, uh, take it easy. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.